Good morning, everyone. A lovely morning this morning as we approach the end of October, this last Sunday in October. Welcome this morning to our Sunshine Salvos online service. Uh, you can see that I've got a little friend here, uh, which is, of course, symbolic of the fact that last night we want to congratulate, of course, the Richmond Football Club for going back to back in winning their second premiership in a row. So to all the Richmond supporters out there, of whom I'm not one of them, by the way, but to all those Richmond supporters out there, congratulations. And to all Geelong supporters, which I know a few of, and a few may well be joining us here this morning, I say to you, commiserations, better luck next year. But of course, what happens next year will be entirely dependent on, of course, the, the mighty Hawks who I think will come in, swoop in and knock off the Tigers, knock them off their perch and be victorious again. And that will be the end of the cheap props and puppets for this morning. But we do love our football as Australians and in what has been an incredibly difficult year, we do really have to uh, be quite appreciative and thankful to those people who managed to scrounge together an AFL football season uh, in the most difficult of circumstances. And the culmination of that was last night. But of course, uh, there is another football game on tonight, which uh, I might, might make reference to a little later. But good to see a number of you joining us already this morning. Good morning, Arne and Michelle. Great to see you. Good morning to family out at Muralbark. Good to see you. Good morning to Norman Ngu. Great to see you here this morning. Good morning to other family in Box Hill. Good morning to Stephen and Meg and the family out at Melton. Great to see you here this morning. Good to see you, Alison and Ian. I know you've copped enough on Facebook overnight from people who should know better. So we won't talk any more about the football, but it is good that you've joined us this morning as well. Commiserations to you, Alison. Good morning, Sean. <clears throat> good to see you and to Joe. Always fantastic to have you here with us on a Sunday morning, Joe. Good morning to you, Joy, out there at Melton. And to Margaret Kelly. Good morning to you as well. And I'm sure that others will join us in due course throughout the duration of this coming hour that we'll spend together, which will revolve around the theme this morning of silence. And it's really that moment in some ways after the final siren is gone and all the crowd is left and there is just the empty stadium left, the silence. Uh, and and we'll be looking this morning at what the essence of silence means. And we'll be doing that through one of the Advent prequel stories, one of the stories that leads up to the, the birth of Jesus, that, uh, a story that is told at the very beginning of the Gospel of Luke involving an elderly couple and an, their amazing story but particularly this morning, we'll focus on Zechariah and his part in that lead up, not only to the birth of his own son, but to the birth of the son of God. Other people joining us as well. Good morning, Diane. Great to see you and acknowledging also Ian's mum, Rita, over in Adelaide. Good to see you and have you join us this morning as well. As I always do, I want to acknowledge 
the traditional owners of the land upon where we're gathered here this morning. Wherever you are, but certainly where I am, I acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and I pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and also honour the future aspirations of the next generation of our First Nations people. And as an officer of the Salvation Army, proudly also state our recommitment to the cause of reconciliation and journeying with our First Nations people in seeking justice for them. Good morning, Margaret Dyer and Marcia. Great to see you here this morning as well. In reflecting on silence, I have a nice prayer that really acts this morning as a call to worship, bringing us into an attitude of prayer, but also attuning us to the silence around us. Let's pray as we commence our online service this morning. Lord Jesus, you who sought the silence of the desert and said to your disciples, come away by yourselves and rest a while. Lord Jesus, we pray that we would enter and also take the time to withdraw, to enter the solitude that will lead to greater clarity, greater insight, and a greater stillness of our souls. So that day by day, we too may know you more clearly, may love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Vicky. Great to see you here this morning as well. Good morning also to other family in Box Hill and also other family in Muralbark. Great to see you all here this morning. Thank you for your presence here in this online space. I'm going to sing some songs this morning. There's actually four of them. Now, I'm not getting carried away or overexcited. The first three songs are quite short uh, and they flow together almost a little like a medley. So we'll be singing these four songs this morning. We're together again, just praising the Lord and then leading into bind us together with chords that cannot be broken. And that then leading us into that prayerful reflection in his time. He makes all things beautiful in his time. And we'll close out our worship time in song this morning with that lovely contemporary, in some ways haunting and reflective song in the silence. But first together, we're together again as we are right here at Sunshine Salvos here as a community of faith. We're together again, just praising the Lord. We're together again, just praising the Lord. We're together again in one accord. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again, just praising the Lord. We're together again, just praising the Lord. We're together again in one accord. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again, just praising the Lord. Find our 
us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. In His time. teaching me your way, that you do just what you say in your time, in your time, in your time. You make all things beautiful in your time, Lord, my life to you I'll bring, may each song I have to sing be to you a lovely thing in your time. In the splendor of your holiness, in the stillness of your glory, let me hear. gentle whisper of your voice. Father, I long to stand before you and lay my life before you. I come to worship you alone. Oh my God, I reach my hands toward you. With all my heart adore you, let me hear your voice. With the power of your presence, and your beauty all around me. As the heavens stand in awe of you, let me hear your voice. 
the gentle whisper of your voice. Father, I long to stand before you and lay my life before you. I come to worship you alone. Oh my God, I reach my hands toward you. With all my heart adore you, let me hear your voice. Father, I long to stand before you and lay my life before you. I come to worship you alone, oh my God. I reach my hands toward you, with all my heart adore you, let me hear your voice. The gentle whisper of your voice, Father. Let me hear your voice. The gentle whisper of your voice. Father, we long to hear your voice speak to us this morning. And we thank you that it's in the quiet times in the times where we stop and be still, that you really do reveal yourself to us in lovely ways. Lord, we pray this morning that you would do just that in the stillness, in the quietness of this Sunday morning, which you've gifted us again, new grace, new mercies, fresh for us today. Lord, we pray that we would have a spirit of receiving this morning, but that we would be attuned to you and your voice as we worship you this morning, as we open our hearts and our minds to your word this morning, we pray that you would bless us. And this we pray in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Arne, again for being very diligent in providing the words for the songs for our online gatherings. It's a great help to us all. And I thank you for, again, doing that this morning. Good morning, Kevin and Hillary out there in Melton. Good to see you this morning. Good morning to you, Delwyn joining us from Gippsland. Great to see you. Good morning, Narelle. Good to see you as well. <clears throat> Some announcements I have this morning. <clears throat> Gosh, singing four songs. I've stretched myself this morning. I, I, I'm feeling a bit croaky in my throat from all that singing. Excuse me. Some announcements. Not this coming Thursday, but the following Thursday, there will be another Sunshine Salvo small group gathering online. We just had one just a few days ago. So not this coming Thursday, but the one after, there will be Sunshine Salvo small group happening online here in the Sunshine Salvo's Facebook page at 7 p.m. You are most welcome to come and join us. It's also opportune for us to begin to let you know <clears throat> that in November, from the 5th of November to the 25th, so a period of around three weeks, Lieutenant Fung and myself will be taking a three week break. We had planned on uh, going on a fantastic holiday to Paris with a little bit of Prague 
and Venice thrown in as well, even doing a little jaunt over to London via Barcelona. But we've had to cancel those plans, of course. Um, so we'll be holidaying in Sunshine West, the next best destination in the world. But we will be taking those three weeks break from the 5th of November through to the 25th of November. And during that time, of course, that will mean that we won't be having the online service. What I will be proposing is that uh, you join one of the other multitude of online services happening around uh, the salvos around Melbourne, and I'll provide some good options for you uh, to be able to go and check out some of those different worship services, which is a good thing because it's always healthy to go and enjoy another expression of a Sunday morning meeting or service, whether it's face to face or gathered or whether it's online. So you'll have the opportunity to do that in November to go and have a look at what some of our other brothers and sisters are doing in the Salvo world online. But over the coming week or so, I'll provide some options. There will, of course, next Sunday still be uh, our Sunshine Salvo's online service, but then it will be taking three weeks break. The other announcement I have uh, that relates to certainly developments as they are happening, and, and, and certainly they are happening by the moment, even this morning, we're anticipating further announcements from the Premier of Victoria, Daniel Andrews, around further lifting of restrictions. We're hoping for that in any case. And we know that last Sunday there was significant announcements around the lifting of restrictions here in Victoria. Developments, and, and this is a, a changing landscape by the day, but certainly in light of the announcements that were made last week, Fung and I have received a, a few inquiries about when, therefore, might our own faith community at Sunshine Salvos be able to again gather in worship. I want to refer uh, to a, uh, a letter that came out from our divisional headquarters, just clarifying what uh, the Salvation Army's position is at the moment around worship. Uh, what is permissible and currently what isn't and, and how that might look in the future. So we know that at the moment, as things stand, and, and, and this might change this morning because there are those further announcements pending, but as things stand at the moment, indoor religious ceremonies are not permitted. Outdoor religious gatherings are permitted at the moment with a limit of five people plus the faith leader. And these must happen adjacent to that place of worship. And there are other announcements around weddings and funerals as well, which I won't elaborate on. But the third step, which was also announced that would be planned for to, to come into effect on the 1st of November, uh, allow for indoor ceremonies, which are still actually not allowed, no gathered worship indoors. Uh, there could be outdoor religious gatherings of up to 20 people plus one faith leader. Private worship allowed only for households or household bubbles plus a faith leader. And places of worship, uh, if they conduct ceremonies, again, outdoors and adjacent to that place of worship, would be subject to existing workplace requirements, including but not limited to keeping records of everyone who attends, cleaning requirements and having a COVID safe plan well and truly in place. But further to that, the Salvation Army have also specified these details. <clears throat> that outdoor religious gatherings must be reflective of the denomination of the Salvation Army, 
At outdoor religious gatherings, there must be no sharing of food or drink, crockery, utensils, vessels, or other equipments by any participants present. Outdoor religious gatherings must be proximate to the place of worship, meaning that it should be adjacent to the Salvation Army property. In, in other words, that, that means for us at Sunshine Salvos that we would be able to hold outdoor gathered worship in our community garden because that is adjacent right next to our hall. A further explanation for religious gatherings continues here. It says, whilst singing is not encouraged, it is permissible with masks on. Any attendees with a medical exemption from wearing masks would need to refrain from singing. And under no circumstances can brass be played during an outside religious gathering. So there are still a number of really stringent rules in place for where things sit at the moment. Anticipating that a further lifting of restrictions will mean that uh, there would be the capacity or the possibility of 20 up to 20 people gathering in outdoor worship um, means that we could consider, as some have suggested to us, uh, beginning again some gathered worship outside in the community garden. However, in discussing that and praying about it between Fung and myself, we really have come to the decision that we would not want to offer a service for 20 people or maybe have some form of roster in terms of a rolling attendance uh, for an outdoor service even of up to 20 people. We, we would prefer to wait until our whole um, church, our whole faith community can gather. We don't want to separate uh, people from ourselves from each other. We would prefer to wait until we can all come together and gather and worship. And, and we anticipate that that may well happen, certainly in terms of a, the next step being a, an out, outdoor service of being up to 20 people, we'd anticipate that that would further be lifted up to 50 people. At that time, that is when we can really start to consider coming together again as a gathered worship, because 50 really is the average of our number in terms of a gathered worship service at, Sun, at Sunshine Salvos. So we're anticipating and prayerfully hoping that that might be the reality in the early of next year. So in January of 2021, we really are hoping and praying that we might, as a whole community of faith, be able to gather together and worship. It won't be indoors, it will be outdoors. And of course, that could well be quite okay, given that uh, we'll be in the midst of summer in January. So that is really our hope and what we are working towards. A gathered worship of the whole expression of who we are as Sunshine Salvos out in our community garden in early next year. That gives us also time to be able to clean up the absolute jungle that is our community garden next to our hall. We haven't had the normal students and volunteers who uh, keep our garden well maintained. We obviously haven't had those people attending to the needs of the garden over the past six months. So there is a lot of work involved to clean up the garden, which I'm hoping perhaps in December sometime to be able to organise a community working bee that would uh, go a long way towards doing that. But I thought it was just important to announce to you this morning that Sunshine Salvos, uh, we, we won't be going to go down the line of a a split or partial face-to-face uh, -face gathering in our worship, we will wait until we can all gather together in worship, hoping that that will be in January of next year. So I ask for your patience and your prayers, and certainly 
um, to keep up your hope that that will be the eventuality. Of course, we uh, recognise that things can change and that if we can bring forward that um, hope of a larger gathered worship outdoors, if that fits in with um, the lifting of restrictions accordingly, then we will do our ab absolute utmost to make that happen as soon as possible. We would welcome any people to come and put their hand up to help clean up the garden. So thank you, Tao and Tan. Knowing, of course, what a beautiful garden you have that we would just dream of aspiring to for our community garden, but we will need all hands on deck. Uh, but I will let everyone know and put a broader call out to the Sunshine community uh, for people to volunteer on a designated working bee day that hopefully will be sometime I would anticipate in December. That's all the announcements for today. Of course, you know, if you move in and around, usually as we do shops, which we probably haven't really had much opportunity to do, of course, over the past month or so. But we would know that uh, Christmas comes early these days in Australia. The, the trees and the decorations and all the, the trimmings that go with Christmas normally appear on our shelves around September. And so uh, Christmas is definitely drawing near, it's coming upon us. And so this morning, we really are beginning the season of Advent, but we begin it, as I said at the outset, with a story that is a bit of a prelude story to the birth of Christ. And it involves Zechariah and Elizabeth, the parents of a little boy who would be born, whose name was John. But this morning we focus on Zechariah and his story. And we read from Luke chapter one, verse five, through to 24. Luke chapter 1, verse 5 to 24. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And I love how it starts here as we move into this Advent season. It all begins with a Jewish priest, Zechariah, who lived when Herod was king of Judah. Zechariah was a member of the priestly order of Abiah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and now they were both very old. One day, Zechariah was serving God in the temple for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priests, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary and burn incense in the Lord's presence. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. Zechariah was in the sanctuary when an angel of the Lord appeared, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was overwhelmed with fear. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah, for God has heard your prayer and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son. You are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness and many will rejoice with you at his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or hard liquor. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will persuade many Israelites to turn to the Lord, their God. He will be a man with the spirit and the power of Elijah. 
a prophet of old. He will precede the coming of the Lord, preparing the people for his arrival. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will change disobedient minds to accept godly wisdom. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I know this will happen? I'm an old man now, and my wife is also well along in her years. And then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. And now, since you didn't believe what I said, you won't be able to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly come true at the proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out, wondering why he was taking so long. When he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to them. Then they realised from his gestures that he must have seen a vision inside the temple sanctuary. He stayed at the temple until his term of service was over, and then he returned home. Soon afterwards, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. May God add wisdom to the reading of his word this morning. One of the things that Fung and I often comment on and miss the most about not having been able to gather together in worship at Sunshine Salvos is the sound of children. We were reminded of that just two or three days ago when a number of people in line with the lifting of restrictions announced recently were able to come down to Sunshine Salvos and get a haircut. Now that was a joyous occasion, let me tell you. There was a lot of joy, there was a lot of noise and a lot of laughter and a lot of great catching up that a number of us did that day. But particularly on that day as well, there were children. There was little Drew, uh, Dale and Rhiannon's son, grandson of Ian and Alison. Ha they're having a great time. And there was also Ariel, little daughter of Arne and Michelle there. And the sound of children laughing, screaming, playing was really just music to our ears as we were again reminded of what community sounds like, of what we enjoy and, and to be honest, probably what we've taken for granted for a long time at Sunshine Salvos in thinking of the noise on a Sunday morning. It was really lovely to hear those beautiful sounds of children again, it really was. Because there was a time, you know, and, and many of you will reflect on this, there was a time when it was often said around tables and around life, family life, that children should be seen but not heard. That it was far better for children just to remain silent than to be too prominent. And so we've moved far beyond those days and I'm thankful for that because children do need to be heard and they're a blessing to us all when they are heard. And I know that there are churches who even in times when we are gathered together would just love to have the sound of children within the walls of their sanctuaries. There are churches around who would just give their right arm to not have to continually hear the silence of a child-free place. Children are a blessing and the sound that comes out of their mouth is really praise to the God, the God of joy and the God of life. But silence is also important as well and that's what we're going to reflect on a little this morning because this story obviously reflects the silence that fell upon Zechariah as a result of this incredible pronouncement that was made. Reminiscent, of course, of, of another ancient story from the Hebrew Bible 
the story of Abraham and Sarah, who themselves were advanced in years and who themselves were told that they would bear a son, which was miraculous in, in light of their advanced years. But certainly the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth is also a story miraculous. A story where an angel reveals the impending birth, just as an angel does, of course, with Mary and Joseph later. But this particular story of Zechariah really does place a spotlight and emphasizes this descending silence that comes upon him. And that's what we want to have a look at this morning. Leading up, of course, to this story being at the very beginning of the Gospel of Luke, we can look back through that chronologically. And if we approach it in a biblical sense, then we have a fair gap of time from when the last words of the Old Testament were spoken to this particular time when that angel appears to Zechariah in the temple. In fact, in a biblical way within the actual Bible itself, it can be argued that there is a fair amount of silence, not too much spoken or recorded that we have in our Bible. Now, I'm going to come back to that point in a moment. But we have that time of silence leading up to this story of Zechariah. He's a priest of the order of Abiyah. There were 24 orders of priests in Israel at that time. There were far, far more priests than there were places to be priests because there was only one temple. And so it was the custom at that time of an operating roster where orders, and again, there were 24 of them, orders of priests would one by one, according to their order, be given responsibility for priestly duties in the temple. And of course, there were many priestly duties that had to be fulfilled in the temple. And the most prestigious, the most holiest of those was the lighting of incense in the very sanctuary, the Holy of Holies, the place where the presence of God dwelt. It was, it was the most important and illustrious role and responsibility for a priest to be called to do that particular duty. So that within the order of Abiyah, which was the eighth order of the 24 orders of priests, within that order, and there would have been quite a number of priests within that order, lots were cast. In other words, it was the luck of the draw and someone pulled out the short straw and that was Zechariah, and he was given that highest task, which is a task that he would only ever do once in his life. The other interesting thing about that task is that, especially when the Israelites operated with a tabernacle and the priest would go in to light the incense within the Holy of Holies and do other duties within that very, very divine holy space, they often as a part of what they would wear, would wear around their ankle a bell, which would be attached to a string. And the reason for that, and the string would lead out of the Holy of Holies so that it was almost like they were roped up. The reason for that is that there was the fear in priests that because they were entering into the very presence of God, that if they did something wrong, then God would be very swift in his vengeance and strike that priest down. So there was always the listening from the outside and the waiting outside of people, listening for a bell to sound or no bell to sound, which would mean that something's happened and that they would be able to drag the priest out if he'd done the wrong thing and God had done something terrible to him. That was the ancient tradition. But even still in the time of Zechariah, people would gather outside and they would pray because there was an element of fear that any priest, no matter how holy or righteous they were, entering into the very presence of God within that holy of holies was in some 
form of peril potentially if they displease God and didn't do or carry out their duties the right way. Now, we would scoff at such a thing today in our faith, but that was certainly the earnest, sincere faith of the Jewish nation at that time, and particularly those of the priests. It was a dangerous business, but a very prestigious business to actually get the role of going into the Holy of Holies to light the incense within there. And that was Zechariah's task this day. And so he goes in, he does that. He does it faithfully. He does it the right way. And then an angel appears. And you can imagine how fearful Zechariah may well have been, probably fearing for his life, probably fearing that he had done something the wrong way and that he was about to get a divine sword thrust through him. But the angel, of course, says, don't be afraid and gives him the news that he will have a son. And that his son's name will be John, must be called John. And that this son would be great in the eyes of God. He would bring people, the people of Israel back into relationship with God. He would be a man preaching repentance. He would be a man with the spirit of Elijah. He would have the Holy Spirit upon him even before birth. He was going to be the one who would prepare the way of the Lord. And all of this news comes to Zechariah in this divine, amazing moment with this angel, Gabriel, giving him the news. And Zechariah's very human response is, well, how can this happen? Because I'm an old man. How do I know this is going to happen? And that's, of course, when silence descends upon Zechariah. Those words were the last words he spoke for quite a while, at least nine months. Gabriel says, because you didn't believe, because you didn't have the faith to see and believe what will happen, you won't speak until it actually does, and it will happen. And then you will speak because you will know that this has been fulfilled. And so Zechariah stumbles out of the temple and everyone's there wondering why he took so long, probably fearing that he dropped dead or something had happened in there. And he comes out and he can't speak and everyone presumes he's had some vision, something happened, something amazing. And he goes off on his way back home eventually until, of course, then as the this part of the story ends, that his wife Elizabeth, advanced in years, did fall pregnant. And as we know from the story, would eventually have a son whose name would be John. And the first words that Zechariah uttered after that long period of silence would be the words, his name will be John. That's the story. But it's a story that obviously encompasses, encompasses this idea of silence. In going back, in talking about the silence of the years before this, from the Old Testament to the New, many have said and many have put up the idea that God was silent for that time, that God had had enough of the lack of faith of Israel, that God went and took a 400 year vacation turned his back on Israel and had nothing to say to them and that's why we have this gap in terms of our bible this chronological gap or this linear gap of years from the very last words spoken to the beginning of the gospels in in many ways that's probably not the most accurate or best way of thinking of of certainly god and certainly uh, the fact that there wasn't really a 400 year silence in that time. We might not have written uh, books in our Protestant Bibles that talk about uh, what was going on in that time, but certainly within the greater literature of the church, there were certainly recordings of things going on in that time. And we know and can take it in good faith that God was still active, that God was still doing things, that God wasn't silent during that time. There was a lot going on in the life of Israel as they transitioned between empires 
dominating them to another empire dominating them to eventually the Roman Empire coming into Lord power over the nation of Israel. There was a lot of things going on, just not recorded in our Protestant canon of the Bible. And then we come to Zechariah in his moment in the temple there, the epiphany of the angel, the message given and the consequence. Now, a lot of people have commented that this silence that was thrust upon Zechariah was in some way some form of divine punishment because he showed a lack of faith. I'm not sure that it's necessarily helpful to see what happened to Zechariah as divine punishment. I have my own issues about the whole um, concept of divine punishment in a, in a broader sense. But I think what Zechariah was offered was not so much a punishment, but was really offered an invitation to be silent. And then, as it would turn out, I believe offered what would eventually be a gift of silence. You see, while Zechariah mightn't have been able to talk for those nine months, that didn't mean that God still wasn't doing things. God was doing things in Zechariah. God was at work, certainly within Elizabeth. God was still active. Zechariah might have been silent in not being able to speak, but that didn't mean that there was silence all around. There was a lot going on. And we know from Zechariah's life later in, in Luke's gospel, after John's born, I think from around verse 68 and onwards, there is this um, song of praise that comes from Zechariah. So that we can presume that from that moment in the temple with the angel where his lips were sealed to the moment when they were again open, God was doing something within Zechariah and Zechariah was changing. So that the silence was in its own way an invitation, a gift that led to Zechariah being a better person. Silence is really a relative thing because we might believe that there are moments where we have silence, but there is always some noise going on in the background. Silence is really a matter of perspective. It's relative. And you know what? People would say, well, where, where could you possibly go in this earth for there to be a perfect silence? Probably nowhere. People would say, OK, well, then maybe you could go into the into the dark, expanse, vacuous space. Among the stars and the moon, and then you would actually enjoy silence. Well, there might be silence to the human ear. But that doesn't mean that there's necessarily silence, even out in space, in the galaxies. There's a cacophony of noise, maybe not audible to the human ear, because that noise that happens in space happens in different and expressed in different ways, in waves and frequencies. Silence is relative. We know even here on Earth that we might not hear something, but your dog heard it and heard it a lot clearer. Dogs have some of the most wonderful hearing of any animal on the planet. They hear things that we can't hear at frequencies that we have no ability to hear. So silence in its own way is relative. You see, I don't think when, when we think about silence and often in times when we feel that there's nothing happening for us or that we're struggling in our faith and we, and we have this sense that God is silent, that he's turned away and that, and that um, there's nothing coming from God. I think that our wisdom should remind us that actually God is in his own way never silent. There's always something happening. There's always something going on. And the silence that we really focus on isn't God's, more our own. And sometimes that silence can be harmful. Sometimes that silence can be healthy. I love the quote, 
and I put it up on the Facebook page um, in drawing your attention to this morning's service, this quote from Marina McCoy, who says that silence actually makes room for the fullness of God's dynamic and healing power. In that way, silence is a gift. In that way, we should embrace the moments of relative silence that we have in our lives. We've come through and are still coming through, slowly emerging out of one of the most tumultuous and difficult years that many of us have ever experienced, and certainly the likes of which have been unparalleled for, for the majority of us in our lives. Coming out of a global pandemic for us here in Australia really gives us cause to reflect back on some very difficult months, especially here in Victoria, where we've been locked down and had to endure the hardship of our liberties being restricted in ways we couldn't have ever imagined. And when we look back and reflect on that, we might reflect on the fact that we feel that things have been fairly silent, that there hasn't been much going on. I'd like to suggest that God hasn't been silent over these past months during even our lockdown and our restrictions, even in our ability, not in our inability, not to be able to come together in gathered worship. God hasn't been silent. He's been doing things. He's been active. He's been on the move. He's been cre creating opportunities. Dare I say it as God's word would say, as it does in Isaiah 43 verse 19, God has been doing a new thing. Do we see it? Do we perceive it? It's springing up before us, a new reality. So what does all that mean for us in the here and now? Can I encourage you in your faith journey to seek after silence, to try and be still, to try and be calm, to take time out of the activity of your life, the routine, to intentionally take time to be still, to stop. And as best you can, knowing that of course, we can't even with our ears, unless we're hearing impaired, of course, but with our normal healthy ears, we're still going to hear something. But if we're still, then at least we can enjoy the best kind of silence that we can attain. Silence for ourselves that allows us to attune our ears spiritually with God. For God is still at work and he's doing things. We just have to attune our ears to him, to tune into his divine frequency and catch on to what he has in store for us in the here and the now and the tomorrow. Can I encourage you to intentionally seek out silent times in this coming week that you might try and hear and discern that still small voice of God? And it might be that voice that is the wind. It might be the dog that barks. It might be the child playing. It might be the noise of something that you might regard as being fairly everyday and mundane. It's even in those things, in the silence, that we can hear the voice of God just speaking to us, reminding us that he's good, that he still is at work, and that he still has good plans to prosper us and to take us to a better place. Enjoy the silent moments that come your way. Don't take them for granted. Enjoy them. Immerse yourself in them. But know that our silence, us being silent, is not the same as God being silent. Because God always has something for us. Seek out those silent moments. Embrace solitude. Embrace those moments where you can be still 
and know that he is God and that he still holds you in the palm of his hand and surround you with his love and grace. Enjoy the silence. Embrace it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the times in our life where we can be silent, where we can simply listen to our heartbeat, focus on our breathing, and worship you and praise you for the fact that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And that we can listen to the world around us, the wind blowing, animals barking their praise to you, children playing, full of joy, full of life. Lord, we thank you for the sounds of our world that remind us that life is good and that you are good. But Lord, give us moments in our week, this coming week, where we can intentionally seek out silent moments to come closer to you and to try and listen and tune ourselves to your frequency, to your voice. Lord, we thank you for this text, this story this morning that reminds us that silence isn't necessarily such a bad thing, but it can give us opportunities in which to grow and go deeper into you, come closer to you. Lord, help us to embrace that truth. Bless us in this coming week, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just seeing a note here that Alison has put, the news may have come through, I'm guessing from from uh, the Victorian government, no easing of restrictions today until northern suburbs tests fall in here yeah, concerning um, developments in northern suburbs in East Preston and Broad Meadows and the city of Hume. So there may not be any announcements today as to further lifting of restrictions, but potentially in the days ahead. We'll certainly keep an eye and keep our hope that those restrictions will continue to be lifted soon. A prayer of benediction I leave with you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only God, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, be all glory, majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and ever. Amen. I said at the beginning, I started with football and I finished with football because tonight there is another important game and I will be definitely tuned in for that game because the Melbourne Storm, Melbourne and Victoria's pride and joy will be in the grand final of the National Rugby League, of course, facing off against the Penrith Panthers up there in Sydney. So all jump on the storm and let's get aboard and be proud that we're Victorian, that we've come through an incredibly difficult time and we've do, done incredibly well to get to where we are now with our COVID-19 pandemic situation. But let's all celebrate tonight a Victorian victory with the Melbourne storm, lifting the trophy. Please God, may it be so. Have a great week, everyone. Stay safe, be blessed, and seek out the silent times when you can in your life. We'll see you in this place again next week. God bless you. Bye for now.